Boy beats fast, colors and promises. How to be brave? How can I love when I'm afraid to fall? No. Words, words gonna get you nowhere. No, like if you want to be about words, go write a book, be an author. Do, you know, <laughs> that's what. <laughs> go write a book. Be about that and you be. will if you go through this. I think we're all gonna be sitting down writing a book if we haven't already. You know how many books there will be? Hey written guys, it's Crystal Black here. Hey guys, it's Crystal Black here. We are talking about ADHD, of course, mental health matters. And I found yet another great resource. One of my favorites is Attitude, which is A D D Attitude, get it? Magazine. And they're such a great resource. They have everything from like webinars, other resources, you know, psychiatrists, newsletters, blogs. So professionals you can get in touch with, um, just different people's stories, whether it's parenting, you know, your child has ADHD, like like mine does, and my son, we found out when he was five, or adults, such as myself. I also found out a couple years ago. Instead of finding out when I was a child, because that was a really long time ago, whether you're in the parenting boat with your child or it's for you or a friend or you're trying to figure out if you have it. Also on Attitude Magazine's website, it is attitudemag.com. You can get on there, take some quizzes, some tests. There's other types of guides and all different kinds of articles. So I picked this one out today because I was thinking about superpowers, right? And I talked to my friends and other people that I know about this or who have ADHD. And I like to point out the positives. And of course, I found this great article and blog on their website. And I get it to my email as well. But it's called 12, um, what is it called? 12 Amazing Something Positive Points, What I Would Never Trade Away. So it says the positives of ADHD are numerous and mighty. From creativity, empathy, and tenacity, just to name a few. And here, some readers are going to share their amazing superpowers. So that's pretty cool. They've taken some readers' responses that are coming in and just combining them and listing them into this helpful article. So it's 13 positive points, what I would never trade away. And I got to say, after I reviewed this just today, very quickly before I got on here to do this, and by the way, there's 13 and it's Friday the 13th. I'd like to point that out, a little ADD. <laughs> point there so whenever you watch the super fun it's october friday the 13th here 2023 and the first one is creativity and tenacity i love this because these are two points that i always love to say about myself especially when i'm looking for a job i don't know about everybody out there like you're applying for things or whether you're even applying to colleges you're in school you're aspiring to do more a lot of times they'll ask what three words describe you most right or give us a few different positive words that describe you and i always put determined or you know tenacious something like that at the top because it's true and you'll know if you have adhd or anything inner interweaving and gapping in with that it's it's something when you get your mind on something if it's something you want to do or just something you become obsessed with for whatever reason um it it's it's definitely a great positive point. So tenacity and being determined and the creativity that comes with it. So getting creative. And a lot of people, I say this all the time, people forget we are creative beings. And as you get older, it's so easy to forget that. And so one of my favorite tools, I'll throw this in a personal note, is the artist's way. And I learned about this in one of my acting classes some years ago when I did that as an adult just jumped in. It was super great. So I would recommend this to anyone at all, just trying to live your life to, you know, making your life your art, really, whether you think you're artistic or not or creative, everyone is because we're living this life. And if you want to live a full life, whether you have ADHD or not, that's just a fun plug I'll put in there. Check it out, Julia Cameron, The artist Way, but you can learn lots of other tips to this point. Number one, about being creative and how to Heal your inner child because all children are creative. We're born in creativity, right? Life force. The way we're conceived is creative. I mean, it's the very life force that we're all brought into this world in. So it is creativity. So anything that we're losing as we get older, trying to be adults and, you know, they try to get you to behave and not look like you have ADHD and all these kinds of uh, behavioral issues, right? It's like, it's not really an issue if you really focus on what we're chatting about. 
which are the positives and all the great superpowers and just positive characteristics of being a real person in the real world and living your real life. So I love that as an opening point. But the second one, number two out of 13, it is problem solving. And it makes me laugh because a lot of people like in my family and then know me would not look at me or call me a problem solver. But in fact, I am. And I do, you know, I sell myself and I introduce myself that way a lot to others out there and when I'm looking for a job or, you know, you're networking and you're getting to know people. And I realize in my own life, in my, in my inner thoughts, my inner monologues and every day, I'm like, I am a problem solver and I can take, this is just sharing, me sharing. We're all different. We all have our own strengths and weaknesses, but in case anybody relates to this, I realize on the daily, I am a problem solver because I can take anyone else's problem their business, personal, professional, whatever it is, parenting, stuff with their kids. And I can come up with quick hacks, just easy ways to fix or different ways to look at something. If you just kind of turn it around or turn it upside down, I can like see the other side very easily. Um, I can do some serious analysis for like businesses and I have extensive experience in marketing and PR, for example, sales. So I'm, it's really always been very easy for me to take that education and experience I have and, and, analyze what somebody needs to fix, their strengths, their weaknesses. You heard of a SWOT analysis. So in marketing, so for example, those are some of my strengths. And a lot of people don't realize my son, I don't think he realizes he's a problem solver. And I constantly, as a parent, just encouraging parents out there, just look for that in your kids. All these fun, positive, little like nuanced traits. You don't really realize they're there unless you're really paying attention. You're in the moment, you're living life, being a parent, um, just knowing yourself, getting to know yourself better. So this, uh, they have an example on number two for that one. It says, whoever this reader was is great. Tricky situations that our neurotypical peers might miss. So our readers are pros at problem solving. It says, my son can always come up with a solution. No ladder, no problem. Push this chair right up against the wall an instant height. <laughs> and another reader wrote him, my daughter and I can always see the big picture. We can automatically picture how pieces of the puzzle fit. And we come up with long-term, highly feasible solutions. No band-aids here. And that one says Aaron. So thanks, Aaron. <laughs> and then the last one looks like her name is AD, I think. Yeah. It says, my ADHD superpower is what I like to call brain art. I love that. I can easily think of several ideas and then connect them in creative ways, regardless of how unrelated they might be. And that one just, it hit home to me. I just read that before I got on here to chat with you guys. And I love that brain art. And it's what I'm talking about, just living life and making your life your art. So it's just such a fun, positive way at looking that ADHD and all the neurodiversity that comes along with that whole, you know, bag of, I don't want to say bag of tricks, the whole bag. Let's just call it a bag. We don't know what else is in that bag. Let's find out. Number three, it says imagination and creativity. So a lot of people with ADHD, we don't, we don't just think outside the box, but we create our own fortresses within our own unbounded imagination, creativity. Like there's no limit. My son actually just said that last night. He looked at me. I don't know what we were talking about. It was all over the place. Of course, we have ADHD. <laughs> I don't know what everyone else was talking about. We were in our own little bubble. And he was like, mom, there's no limits. And it's unlimited. And I don't, I forgot what we were saying. But I was like, yes, you are so right. We just like peas and carrots. If you guys have seen Forrest Gump, you know, Jenny and Forrest were like peas and carrots. That's me and my son. <laughs> but it also says on that same point, one of the readers wrote in, my son can take you on an adventure and make your imagination light up while just standing in our living room. And that almost brings tears to my eyes. My son's the same way. Just the whole, everything lights up and he's the most amazing soul. And hum I'm about to get up. I better stop talking about him. I'm going to cry. <laughs> like, he's so amazing. <laughs> anyway, the next one by Karen wrote, I'm amazed at ADHDers creativity. They always have more than one idea at a time floating around in their brains. Harnessing mm -hmm. it enriches life for all of us. And then Barbie wrote, I have endless creativity. Now putting those ideas to work is a bit trickier. 
And I thank Barbie for her honesty <laughs> because that's how I feel. I get, I don't know about you guys, feel free, you know, to comment on here, reach out to me. I'll just shout out my email that I started, especially for this right now, before I forget, it's Crystal Nicole Black. And you spell that C-R-Y-S-T-A-L-N-I-C-O-L-E-B-L-A-C-K. 2023 at gmail.com. Please feel free to email me and then we can chat and see what we are talking about. But I love how she pointed that out and was honest because, yeah, it's like I get so overwhelmed with all the ideas and creativity flowing. Sometimes I can get so positive and then other times I can get so down because because of the very same point. It's like I want to do so much and I want to do it all at once. And with ADHD, that's the issue. It's like you can't do it all at once. And you don't want anyone to tell you you can't do something. I know that's how I am. Like, don't put any limits on me. Don't you dare try to put me in a box. Or I'm going to be like, escape and run out of that box. You ever heard of those escape rooms? <laughs> or escape the box. Yeah, don't even try to put me in there. Because I'll like destroy the box. And just... <laughs> that sounds violent. But I don't definitely just a creative way. So number four, we're moving on to compassion. So... And I like to say empathy instead of just compassion because it's a little more deep and meaningful meaning and association for me. But it says being different can make people with ADHD compassionate. And I say more empathetic because we're always rooting for the underdogs. We're sharing our unconditional love with other people who are struggling. So whether it's readers we're writing in, whether it's a homeless man down the street or it's the girl on the swim team with Down syndrome who my son's befriending or, you know, my son's being nice to these kids or these kids are getting bullied or whether it's us getting bullied. And I can definitely say that about my son. He's just the most kind, loving kid. And he's been like that all his whole life. And he's 13 now, which still blows my mind. I'm amazed. He looks like a very young, handsome man. And I was just hanging out with him last night. He looks like he's 15 or 16 because he like shut up. Oh, Lord, I don't even want to think about that right now. But hopefully <laughs> there's some other parents out there who are still enjoying their kids in their younger years. And just, you know, take this with a grain of salt as we're going through these points, because it is it is really challenging when your kids are like acting hyper or it's hard for them to focus. They're having trouble with school. So even, you know, beyond us adults who are struggling with this, whether it's our work or just personal life, whatever, you know, trouble with legal, financial financial issues can really be a factor as well. It has been in my life um, just because of this. So those are more on the negative side, I guess. But we're talking about positive. So I'll just encourage you, you know, to reach out. These resources with Attitude Magazine are great. You know, psychiatrists, psychologists, other therapists in your area. Just get on Google, check it out. Call the local, you know, chapters and organizations for ADHD support and mental health in your area. There's also like the national chapter for like, you know, mental health and all that kind of stuff. So you can always reach out to me for more resources. I, I do have an extensive list, but the compassion is a really good point. And I will add a note personally, just because it's so automatic and it can be so intense and it's easy. As I've learned the hard way in life, you can become such a people pleaser and bending over backwards and getting taken advantage by other people because of your empathy, because of your compassion and your love for others. So I would encourage as adults for ourselves, but for parents with kids, just like I've been trying to do with my son and I'm not perfect at all. I mess up all the time. Um, but just to stay humble with that and encourage them to have like self-love and self-boundaries and whether it's friends, family, strangers, neighbors, whatever, just know like how to share their unconditional love, but then also where those boundaries lie and how to look out for certain red flags and other behaviors and others if, you know, they're taking more than what they're giving back and that sort of thing. Your kids at school, you know, that are being manipulative. And sometimes it's just an automatic thing. It's just like a survival skill, right? Um, I know it has been for me in my life. I've been manipulative so much and I didn't even realize what I was doing sometimes or it's such a survival skill. So it's just something to look out for toxic traits, right, with our kids. Because when you have ADHD, it's really easy to be toxic ourselves sometimes and not realize it and then annoy other people. Or on the other side, you give, 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 and you're like, nobody's giving. 
the same level or amount back to me because I have this endless love and energy that I keep pouring out. So it's really important. And I know my son, I will say that's a positive thing. He has really good boundaries and he's so strong and he's even put him up against me in times when it made sense. And I've had to support him and say, you know what? I support you in this. I really respect you and I love you because I taught you this, you know, so it's really important. And then number five, I know it's, we're going to laugh. We're going to cry. We're going to learn. We're going to turn and burn and grow on here. It's all of the above. When you listen to me, 